Welcome to Straight to the Point Tutorials. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can create a panorama using Lightroom, Photoshop, and Luminar Neo. Guys, welcome back. As I said, I will be stitching all this photograph together to create first this panorama in Photoshop, and then edit and retouch the mood, tone, and color of this panorama in Luminar Neo. So if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop, don't worry, you can still create a panorama using free software. And I will mention that software when I start editing. So without any further ado, let's get straight to the point. So right here we are in Lightroom. This is the software I will use to uh, start my retouching process and creating this panorama. If you don't have Lightroom, uh, no problem. You can still use your own program because the final retouching I will do in this photograph will be using Luminar Neo. But if you need to stitch photos together to create a panorama, you can still use a software out there that is called Hugin. H-U-G-I-N is open source software for free. It does a tremendous job, but so far I've seen it uh, working on YouTube. There are plenty of tutorials I'll show you that can you know, teach you how to use it. So that's that's mainly the, the whole purpose of that program is to create panoramas. Since I have Lightroom and Photoshop, I will use these two programs to create the panorama because I'm not an expert in creating panoramas. I depend 100% on the artificial intelligence of these programs as well as the artificial intelligence of Luminar Neo to create those stunning and beautiful uh, color tones. So if you want to hear some tips of how to shoot panoramas, you can stay a few minutes. Otherwise, you can click on the next chapter to move straight to the panorama stitching. A couple of tips uh, for shooting panoramas. The first one is uh, use a tripod whenever you can. I shot this handheld because I didn't bring the tripod with me, but it's a little bit difficult when you do it. A handheld because you need to be, you know, keeping the same, uh, I mean, the same line, right? Avoid tilting the camera or moving to you know, to the top or to the bottom too much, then the program will not have a good reference to align the photograph and create the panorama. Another tip is shoot those photographs in portrait mode. It's better because that way you will give enough room to the program to stitch the images. And then when it's cropped, uh, you can still have your point of interest well in the middle and the center of the photo. If your camera can support shooting raw, I would recommend you to use raw and also shoot in manual mode. Um, you can keep the autofocus, that's okay, but you must adjust the exposure manually. You know, set your, uh, your ISO, your shooter speed, and your aperture to the settings that you like, and then shoot the entire panorama using that same setting. The last thing is shoot as many pictures as you can. Anything between 15 to 20 pictures is okay, it's about right. Uh, to give the program enough data or enough photographs to uh, create a panorama. Let's move now to uh, creating this uh, panorama. So the first photograph I have in here, this is my reference photo to show the starting point of the, the panorama. This is a tip I took from uh, Gavin Howie. Uh, if you can search for Gavin Howie on the internet, he has a lot of good tutorials to, um, to teach you how to shoot these things. So I will not use that photograph. I will click on the first one after that and this is the first photo just a few adjustments in here the first one the lens correction really important for me just to fix the you know any uh, distortion i will use automatic mode here you know i will let the program uh, do the correction automatically and also the white balance uh, this was shot in november around fall time and i want that uh, yellowish orangey look so I will switch this to Claudy, and Claudy is fine. I think it's okay. Uh, you can also use a shade. That depends on your liking, right? I like uh, Claudy. And then with that, I will copy that same uh, adjustment to all the rest of the photograph. So I will click on the first one, which is the reference photo. And then I will go to the last photo, click Shift in my keyboard, click this photo, and then press this button that says sync. And then it's synchronized. 
all the settings. So if I check the last photograph, it has the settings that I applied to the first photo. Now it's time to go to Photoshop. The way to go to Photoshop is you have to select all the photographs. You select the first one, you go to the last one, press shift in your keyboard, click the last one, and then on any photograph, you right click, add, select, edit, merge to panorama in Photoshop. This will open the program and Photoshop will start the process of using artificial intelligence to stitch all these photographs together. Okay, this is the dial box, the photo merge module of, of Photoshop. I will leave the layout in auto. These are the files, the 20 photographs, and the rest of the things the way they are by default. The only thing I have to do here is just to click OK, and I will do that right now. And the program will start working. So I will leave it there. So when it's done, continue with the tutorial. All right, this is the panorama that Photoshop decided to create based on the 20 photographs I shot. I think it's really cool. So the next step right now is just to start cropping this picture. And when I'm done with cropping, you know, cropping and adding the things that I need in here, I will save this image back to photo, uh, I mean to Lightroom and then open Luminar Neo. So you see here in this corner we have all the photographs all of them have a mask applied this is what the program does to create this panorama so i will click on the first one and then press in my keyboard Control, alt shift and the letter e to create this uh, merge so to speak uh, layer i will trash the rest and i will keep that one only so I will crop it using Photoshop. I can still crop this using Lightroom, but I think it makes no sense to save this uh, enormous photo with a lot of empty spaces that I would not use. So I would just uh, crop it here and then save it uh, to Lightroom already cropped. So I will select the cropping tool, um, open resolution. So I will select you know, the, the aspect ratio that I want just by moving these handles. I uh, will put in there, this one at the bottom, I think around there. I'm looking here at the corners, okay? Okay, yes, this is fine. I will move this one inside a little bit more. And this other one, yes, yeah, about there. Mm, okay. I will click Apply. And this is the crop. This empty space, don't worry, I will use another tool. I will select this area. And all right, and then go to edit, content aware fill, artificial intelligence here working, right? And then let me see how it works. It was showing here the result. I think it's okay. I will, let me wait, click okay. Boom, it's there. It created a layer over here with that part only. I will control D to deselect. And then the first layer, I will right click, merge down to merge both layers. So one last thing here with the spot healing brush, I will erase this. I don't like this rocking there. And I want to fill this area with parts of that tree. Yeah, there you go. I, I like it better. That's it, guys. Now is the time to save this image to Lightroom. So I will right click in here, flatten the image and file save. I will close here, close Photoshop. And here I have my panorama. OK, uh, you might be asking yourself, why not jumping from Photoshop directly to Luminar Neo? Uh, that, you can do that. I, I do it this way for two reasons. The first one is my PC is not that powerful. So if I open Lightroom, Photoshop, and Luminar Neo, it might crash and I cannot record the tutorial. And the second reason is because I want to keep an original, so to speak, of the panorama. So if I were to edit this in another program, I can use this unretouched photograph, okay? 
So th those are the two reasons I do it. But, you know, you do whatever works for you better, right? So to open Luminar in here, I would, the same way I did for Photoshop, I will right click in here, go to edit in Luminar Neo. Okay, here we have the photograph in Luminar Neo. It opens the photo in the preset module and I will use a preset in here. I will go to scenery and this one here, you see I have a, I have this one in my favorites, uh, especially for uh, fall, autumn type of pictures. I will click on that fast fix. Boom, the colors are really nice now, but the sky is totally white. So I need to bring a sky into this photo and you will see how that sky will transform the entire mood of this photograph. So I will switch now to edit and select I have it on my favorites. If you cannot find the sky in your favorites, it will be in the creative part someplace here. But typically I put this two in my favorites. So I will click on sky and the sky I want to use for this one is a sky that is already part of Luminar Neo. I mean, comes with the software, um, you know, is this one. I think it's this one is, yeah, Dramatic Sunset 3. Okay, here we have the sky. Mm, I will keep it the way it is. I think it's fine. Probably I will use more, I mean, more saturation here in the, the relighting of the scene because I want, you know, the saturation to actually um, enhance the colors. Probably the relight strength is cool around there. And you see the reflection. You know, this program is really great at, at this. Okay, so with the sky, I think it's okay. No more adjustments here. Now the next step is I uh, will give more structure. Structure is kind of enhancing. Um, artificial intelligence will apply uh, that's, that sharpening, that natural sharpening you need in the photo in different areas. So for that, I will go to the creative side and select structure. Where is the structure? I'm sorry, it's in the essentials. I will select structure AI over here, yeah, we'll add a touch, maybe around two. I uh, will boost this image around maybe 20, 25. Let me see. Okay, still working. You see, you see that slight change in focus. Look, this is without the effect, with the effect. It's just working on the trees and the areas that effect or that adjustment will work fine. So I really like this feature. Move to the creative side and select mood. For this type of photos, I like this one it says cinematic under cinematic toning, uh, long beach. Yes, this one is cool. Maybe you can play with the amount. You apply the amount that you like, right? Maybe you can reduce a little bit around 20, a little bit more saturation. Yes, looking good. All right, we have come a long way. Look at this. This is what we have now. This is the original one. And this is what we have now. Already this panorama is really great. Okay, but I will do one more thing using artificial intelligence. Since I have the tools here, I will use it. I will apply some sun rays. To apply sun rays, you need to have a place in the photograph that where you can place the sun that also will transmit some uh, reality, right? Uh, even though we are just retouching this photograph, changing elements to enhance the picture, um, you need to bear in mind that also you every everything you put in the photograph has to make sense, right? Have to needs to have the purpose of enhancing the photograph and not creating an artificial look, right? Even though you are placing things, but photographers, we do that. We enhance pictures using the tools that we have at hand to make that happen. So I will click on sun rays. And the first thing is place the sun center. And I will, I think you already guessed it, it will be here because this sky has this area. So I will put the sun in here. The amount, now it comes, this is a matter of, of taste or liking, right? So you start adding, maybe I will add around there, uh, under the 
a real look maybe i will reduce it a little bit around there the strength of this mm, is too much i will reduce it a little bit yeah around maybe there and the penetration of the sun rays i will leave it like that for the moment and the sun settings uh, the radius i think i will not change anything here i will leave it the way it is and the ray settings i will increase the number of rays yes maybe around a hundred yes i like that better and randomize i will keep it in zero and over here comes the trick the warmth of the sun this part in here i will put it we're crazy to 100 percent. i want that to be yellow and also the rays let me see Yes, let me about a little bit more around there. Look at that. Look. This small change that looks really realistic. I'll probably move it a little bit like that. Look at that photo. Really, really nice with just a couple of adjustments. Now, one last thing. If you want to add vignettes in here, you can do it using the regular vignette. But I will give you a tip in here. Look at this. You click on develop and click on masking, use a linear gradient and you drag from the top to around there. Okay. I mean, from the bottom to around there and then switch back to adjustments and lower the exposure a little bit like that. Then you go back to masking, then select linear gradient and draw another one here like that okay and then let me see there and then when you click on adjustments you have the adjustment on top and bottom now you see that is focused on this part of the sun all right guys over here the last thing i have to do is just to apply these adjustments okay and the way to apply it is just to click that button that says apply and this will save this photo back to Lightroom. So I will do that right now. I will click replace because yes, I want to save this TIFF file over the other one. And now I have my photograph back in Lightroom. You see over here, I have the, the panorama from Photoshop. If I want to use this photo now, I can export it to JPEGs or whatever, and I can use it, for example, for my desktop background, right? okay guys so there you have it uh let me know what you think about this photograph uh, i think it's really cool and let me know in the comments if you want me to uh, add more tutorials like this and if you like this type of content please consider subscribing to the channel hit that like button and the bell so you can get uh, an alert every time i upload new content for the moment, thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next straight-to-the-point tutorials. God bless you all. Bye-bye.